Hello everyone, how's it going? I'm WoW Crendor, and welcome back to another episode of Fishing with Crendor. We are on episode 19 now. That is a lot of episodes. And today, I am joined by Smooth McGroove. What's up? Not too much. We're just, uh, chilling in Azshara here. And we're gonna do some fishing and talk. Like old men. I'm excited. <laughs> so... For people that don't know who you are, why don't you tell them who you are and what you do and all that stuff. I make acapella versions of video game music. Amazing acapella versions. Very kind of you. <laughs> and you got uh you do all the faces too. Like you got Yeah. You I was wondering game like, middle, you know. Like that's all is that a lot of editing that goes into that too, with all those faces. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 quite a bit of work per video. It's fun. Yeah. yeah, it seems like it'd be fun. But yeah, every time I watch one of those videos, I'm like, wow, this seems like you got to record it. You got to record like each one and then you edit all that. And it's like, I don't know. You seem like you you just live in a cave and just edit and sing. Yeah, when it gets uh, when it gets serious, like when I'm on a regular recording schedule, I, I pretty much am by myself and I forget about, you know, things I should think about, like friends and family. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, are you alive still? And you're just like, oh, uh, kind of, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I've talked to some other YouTube, like, Let's Play guys, and they're like, man, that looks seems like so much work. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. And they're like, I could never do that. And then, you know, some of these guys have, like, 8 million subscribers. And I'm just like, dude, you post, like, two videos a day. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, it's... I understand that, because, like, when I used to make a lot of, like, WoW Machinima-type videos, like, you gotta write it, you gotta do the voice of it, you gotta film it, and you gotta edit it, and it's, like, there's so much that goes into it, versus, like, if you just play Hearthstone for, like, 30 minutes. Yeah, and maybe that's it. It's, like, it, it's, like, at one time, I'm, like, looking at it, I'm, like, hey, like, you know, that was fun, it gets a lot of views, I like Hearthstone, but it's, like, I feel like there's that artistic void. Where I'm like, I really want to just like write and script and like voice and do all those things, and it's like a much more rewarding experience at the end of all of it too. Yeah, yeah, because I've done the gameplay thing for a while, like you know, also streaming, and it's it's a lot of fun. But it's like after you get done, you know, if you're used to doing something with some artistic, oh my gosh, achievement, hundred fish, <laughs> did it, you did it. Wow. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, like, you know, doing these videos, it definitely feels pretty creatively. Like, you know, when I finish one and post it, it's like, there you go. You're out in the world now. You know, it feels, mm -hmm. feels Especially, yeah, it's like you put all that time and effort into it, and you're just like, here it goes, and you just get all that feedback, and like, everybody loves it. Like, it was amazing. It's like, there's something about that that just feels really good. Yeah, it definitely, it's, it's very rewarding, which that's what kept me doing it in the beginning when, like, I had... You know, 12 subscribers, and they were all my family and a few friends. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's really what kept me doing it, too, because I'd, like, I didn't do it as a, like, job or whatever for, like, a year and a half, two years. It was, like, I just love making videos. That's why there's people who are, like, uh, if, uh, if YouTube stopped, like, paying money or doing all the things, like, I don't know if I'd do it anymore. And I'm, like, well, I'd still do it. Like, maybe I wouldn't do it as often, but... Like, I yeah. still would. Like, I still enjoy the whole process of it. Mm-hmm. And you, I think you ha kind of have to to get going. Yeah. Yeah, you really do, because it's... If you start just thinking about money and, like, trying to be like, I'm going to get e-famous, and it's like, don't do that. Yeah, I, I really don't see that working. I mean, I, maybe if you're just, like, super cold-hearted businessman and, like, you can fake it. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe there, you know, there's all types of people out there, so I wouldn't discount it. <laughs> Yeah, but, I try to find the people who just like having fun. Yeah, because you know, then if you surround yourself with people who are having fun, and, and you watch videos of people who are having fun, then you know you're probably gonna have fun. Yeah, exactly. So, what got you into Warcraft in general? Did you play like the Warcraft RTS games, or like how did you get started in like gaming, even let alone WoW? Well, started in gaming, I. uh... My dad brought home an Atari oh, uh. from a pawn shop that he worked at when I was like three or four. And uh, he hooked that up in like the guest bedroom. And I have very vague but very powerful memories of sitting in front of the TV with the joystick 
and playing Atari games and just being completely like enthralled by the experience. It was so awesome. But um, it wasn't until he traded he he traded that Atari for a Sega Master System that came through the pawn shop and brought that home. And he's like, here's the new one. And he hooked that up. And I think by then I was like five. So I was like, you know, old enough to start thinking about things, actually. Yeah. So, you know, I loaded in Alex the Kid in Miracle, in Miracle World. I think that was the first game. Oh, wow. And it was just like, holy crap, this is great. And it, and it came with, like, it was a Sega Master System, but it came pre-installed with Safari Hunt, which was basically Duck Hunt. And also another game called Hang On, which is a motorcycle game. And man, I played the crap out of those games <laughs> as like a five-year-old. So that's how I got started. Yeah, that's and, like, uh, I feel like most people get started pretty young. I know I had like a Nintendo when I was like six years old or something. It's like, I yeah, feel see, like all most my friends people... had Nintendos. Yeah. And I was like the odd man out because I had a Sega Master System. And so I'd go to school and people, they'd be like, oh, you have a Nintendo? I'm like, no, I got a Sega. And they're like, oh, okay, so a Genesis. I'm like, no, I don't have a Genesis. <laughs> I have a Sega Master System. And they're like, what's that? Because in America, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, like the Master System was a flop. Yeah. It, was, it was pretty big in Japan, but like they didn't market it here. So no one knew about Alex the Kid, which is like the Mario of mm -hmm. uh, you know the Sega Master System. Fantasy Star 1 was like a, the big RPG, not, not um, Final Fantasy, which I think Fantasy Star 1 was way better than Final Fantasy 1. Really? It was, it was an amazing game, yeah. The graphics were actually like the best that you could have on 8-bit at the time. I've and, never even heard of it, so I mean... I mean, you've heard of Fantasy Star Online, right? Like the MMO? I've heard, yeah, I've heard of the MMO. Yeah, it, it spawned out of, like, Fantasy Star 1, which came out on the, the Sega Master System, which was a masterpiece. It was really good. And then you had Fantasy Star 2 and 3 and 4, which I think all three of those were on the Genesis, which I never owned the Genesis. Mm. See, I went from, uh, in, I think it was 91, when my dad uh, brought home a brand new Super Nintendo for Christmas. And that changed my world even more because by then I was like, you know, eight years old or something, maybe yeah. seven. And uh, it came with Super Mario World and uh, also the game that I wanted the most because I saw my uncle play it, which was Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Oh, uh, yeah. And, yeah, from then on, I was just like, video games were like my life. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, Super Nintendo, I feel like Super Nintendo is like that big step for like console games back then like going from all those like nintendos and genesis and all that like super nintendo was really good and i feel like the step after that was probably nintendo 64 yeah in uh wasn't it didn't playstation come out before in 64 oh i think you're right yeah i think it did because was uh was in 64 was that 96 i think it was yeah 96 and playstation was like 95 in america i think yeah so I remember, uh, yeah, PlayStation was out, but I remember, like, <laughs> I remember going to Blockbuster. Dang. And they had, like, this, like, the little, like, demo setups, and they had a Nintendo 64, which was, like, brand new then, and it had Super Mario 64 playing on it. And I remember playing on that, and I was like, I need this. <laughs> Man. <laughs> yeah. Because you're so used to, like, all the, the 2D, like, platformer stuff and, like, all those things. Then you play something, it's like, here's Mario, but in 3D. And you're just like, oh, my God, this is insane. Yep. It just blows your mind. Dude, I'll never forget. Because I didn't get a 64 till later. Mm -hmm. I, had to, I had to, like, go to a friend's house after school because my mom worked. So I'd ride home with him. And he had a 64 from, like, the start. And he had Super Mario 64. And, you know, that that music, like, the file select music and, like, bob on Battlefield is, like, mm -hmm. etched. Into my emotional, like, da -da 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 <laughs> and, and like the castle, all the castle music, because it's just like that was the first 3D game I remember just like playing. You know, that was that that 3D because I remember Star Fox on SNES was 3D, and that yeah. blew my mind as well. Mm -hmm. But not as many people played that, and it wasn't, and it was kind of like janky 3D. It was like they had to in input a chip into the cartridge to make it work. Yeah, I remember I played that too. Really expensive to make. Yeah, man, it's crazy like how much gaming evolves in such a short time. Yep. I yeah, know, like PlayStation uh, for me. I remember the big, the big one that hooked me was because uh, we had Tekken. Because I did have a PlayStation, like Tekken Three, I think, and that was fun. But mm -hmm. it was Final Fantasy Seven, 
because my yeah. friend was like, dude, you got to check out this game because he was like older than me. I was like 14 and he was 16. He could drive. I remember that. <laughs> and we went to his house because we hung out a lot. And he's like, he's like, dude, check this out. It's called Final Fantasy VII. And I'd never heard of the Final Fantasy series before that because it was kind of obscure in America. Yeah. And he loads it in. And the first thing he does is go straight to his save game where he fights Sephiroth. Oh, whoa. So that's the first thing I see when I when I <laughs> he loads this in, you know. So that, that was my introduction to Final Fantasy was like the Sephiroth battle. <laughs> the music, the fight, the visuals, and all this stuff. As like a 14-year-old kid, I'm just like... Because I had played, you know, Fantasy Star 1, um, Miracle Warriors, which is another kind of like 2D RPG that was made in 86, or, I think, on, on the mm -hmm. Sega Master System. And, you know, I, I had I played, like, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest a little bit when I was younger. Like, I rented that game. I never owned it. But yeah. seeing full-blown, you know, Final Fantasy VII, the Sephiroth battle, that hit me so hard. I was like, I have to have this game. And he's like, dude, I've already beat it. You can, you can like, borrow this for as long as you want. <laughs> so I remember bringing it home and, and, like, showing my brother and, like, loading, loading it in for the first time. And that intro music plays. And yeah, it was just so that was that was my first big 3D RPG experience. And how uh, did you like play that every day? Dude, like, nah. that was my that was my jam. I would come home from school and just play that. And my brother, you know, he was a few years younger than me, but he would just sit there and watch me play it because he, you know, he was into <laughs> video games because I was. Yeah. So he watched me play through Final Fantasy VII, and you know those big long swaths in those games where you just grind. Mm -hmm. I was familiar with that already because I'd played Fantasy Star and a few others. Yeah. So what I would do is I would put on my own music, you know, because the battle music's great. But after yeah. a while, I would turn yeah, down the game repetitive. and I would put on like the um, the the music, the, whatever I was listening to at the time, which at the time was a lot of like Southern California punk bands, like mm -hmm. Pulley and Strung Out and Less Than Jake, because mm -hmm. they're from Florida. But anyways, like I would, that that was like my soundtrack for a lot of that game. It was a so good you memory. like you like can go back and listen to those songs and it just takes you back even just playing Final Fantasy. Oh yeah, it reminds me of playing Final Fantasy, it reminds me of playing drums to those songs and I was in like 7th grade or like just going skateboarding because that was also my like skateboarding soundtrack. Yeah. So. Yeah, those are, those are good times. So, what about Warcraft? When did you okay. get into that? So, I have a super nerdy uncle who uh -huh. brought over, I think it was in 1996, he brought over uh, I think it was a floppy disk, actually. <laughs> of, um, like a Super Nintendo emulator and a Nintendo emulator in all the games. For like, You know, like, he just had, like, back then, before, like, the internet was really hopping, he had, like, every Super Nintendo game and every NES game that, like, existed on emulator. And me and my brother were just dumbfounded. Like, how were you able to do this? So, you know, we were playing, like, Excite Bike and Super Metroid on, like, my Pentium 1. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, you know, the 200 megahertz beast or whatever it was. <laughs> and um, But he also brought over the disc of Warcraft 1. And so we played that. And my brother didn't play it, but I definitely did. And I remember the squares. It was just squares, you know, and that's how you played Warcraft. And mm -hmm. there wasn't a whole lot of lore. But um, I remember that. I think it was in the fall. It was just playing Super Nintendo emulator and an NES simulator and, like, playing Warcraft 1. And... I, I thought it was so fun. I love the idea of just like building up like a, a world and, and it was like completely up to you where you built because um, the only game I'd played that, like that before was SimCity, of course. Yeah. I played that on my like uncle's computer and like Sim Ant or something like that. Sim oh, Ocean. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of that. I think it was Sim World or Sim Ocean on the SNES. I remember renting that game but not knowing what the heck I was doing. So that wasn't yeah. very. Oh, well, and of course, Populous. I played the the original Populous on Super Nintendo, and so that was like, of course, the God Overworld game. And Warcraft to me was like a more refined version of that. Yeah, so I loved it. And then um, I was exposed to Warcraft Two through the same uncle at his house, like a few years later, whenever Warcraft Two had come out. Mm -hmm. And um, he was playing, and I was like, "Dude, this is awesome!" And he's like, "Yeah, but wait, just wait until Starcraft comes out." And I was like, "What's that?" He's like, "Dude, it's like..." Warcraft 2, but like in space and better graphics. And I was like, oh my gosh. He's like, yeah, it's coming out like in a month. So I remember uh, a few months later remembering that. And I had my mom drive me to like Warehouse Music or some, whatever, some store like that that sold like music and video games. And I like bought yeah. StarCraft. So that got me hooked on StarCraft. And so I played that so freaking much. And then, and then um, you know, 2000 or 2001, 
Warcraft 3 came out. And uh, my friend got it before I did, and we played the crap out of that. But just like uh, StarCraft, my my biggest love with those games was getting on Battle.net and playing custom maps that people would make. Oh, yeah, I love custom maps. Dude. Like RPGs and weird, like, team versus team stuff, like Commando Wars and, like, yeah. tower defense maps. Like, that, I played, that was, like, 99% of my StarCraft and Warcraft 3 experience. Yeah, was, like, was custom maps. I got Warcraft 3, too, like, way back in, a, like, the early 2000, like, it was actually, I think WoW it came out already, it was, like, 2000 five or six and like I played it and all I would do is like play custom maps <laughs> yeah like they're just so fun to play I mean that's where Dota originated from too. yeah I remember playing Dota back in 2003 or whenever it came out mm. and I was like this is complicated I don't really want to play it so I don't <laughs> play it <laughs> but I, I so but people were so into it and there were so many Dota maps going on but mm -hmm. I, I was such a fan of like the tower defense yeah like, like winter Mall. TV, yeah TD <laughs> all these other ones that, that were out at the time and I, I loved finding new ones that I'd never seen before because it was always like it was like finding a new game. Yeah. And some of them were so buggy and they didn't even test them. You know, mm. I was like, oh, this one sucks. But then every <laughs> once in a while, you'd find one that was just awesome, and I would like play it for like three or four days in a row. Yeah, I almost wanted to do like a, a series like now where I like went into Warcraft three and like played some custom maps and stuff because <laughs> there's still like so many that are happening. Like the scene is still active. <laughs> That's that blows my mind. Because StarCraft 2, like, I got that. And that's all I did after I beat the campaigns is to get online and play StarCraft 2 custom maps. And the the scene there was huge. Yeah. So did, you, did you play the WarCraft 3 campaign? Like, or did you just play custom stuff? I played the campaign, but I have almost no memory of it. It makes oh, me wow. sad because, like, that was, you know, I, I got WarCraft 3, played through the campaign, and then just went online and played custom maps. That's all I did. So it, it, like, overshadowed the campaign. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I went back in 2009 and installed Warcraft 3 and played through most of the campaign, but got distracted because I was playing WoW again at the time, and mm. I didn't finish it. And I didn't and I didn't even start the, the Frozen Throne or anything like that. So I, I ever since then, I've been wanting to go back and play through the entire campaign and just, like, re-experience it. It's definitely worth it, because, like, I did, a, I did a big Let's Play series where, like, the only videos I was uploading were Warcraft 3, because everyone's like, oh, you played Warcraft 3? I'm like, I've never played, like, the campaign. And everyone's like, you have to play the campaign. So I literally played through all of the, what's it called, the Reign of Chaos, played through all of the, like, Frozen Throne, all the, like, Rexar campaign. I did everything, and that was, like... It was a really cool experience because after you're done with it, you're, you're like, I want to play WoW again. Or just like the WoW lore. And you like look back into like World of Warcraft and you see so many things that like originated from that campaign that you wouldn't even like recognize had you not played that campaign. Because like I played WoW first and so I'm like, oh, whoa, this is in WoW. And I'm like, wait, this came before WoW. <laughs> and there's just like a lot of those moments. But it's really cool to just. And like see years that. before WoW. Yeah, That's you. Crazy. Have you ever played the Warcraft 2 campaign? I never have played Dude, Warcraft 2. Me neither. And, and, and one of my friends who um, has played the Warcraft 2 campaign, he was like ragging on me because like I haven't, I've never played through it. I've only like seen, I saw my uncle play through bits and pieces, you know, whenever he introduced me to the game. But mm -hmm. having never played through it, I never got to experience like that part of the story in its original inception, you know. And I, that's yeah. another thing I want to do. Yeah, it's like. Uh, it's it's really cool because it's like it's almost like a like a look into the past when you play it nowadays. Yeah, it's it's just big nostalgic trip on top of that. Cause like after I played through the Frozen Throne and everything, I was like, I want to go like all the places Arthas was, and I like flew around and I was like, this is where the Arthas thing happened, or like <laughs> yeah, this dude. is where that happened. <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh, it, it all started in Warcraft, and it's just it's just like they rebuilt it like bigger and like more refined and wow and it's like here and you can go be here at any yeah. time you want and it's <laughs> I, i'm a sucker for that stuff like that's the worlds in games really hook me you know mm -hmm. like when i think about wow i think about like like we're in ashara right now and i think about the way ashara was originally to me when i discovered it for the first time and like the way i felt when i found it and like remembering um, what I did here first, which was just ride around aimlessly, and then, like, see Azuragos, the giant blue dragon, like, what's that? 
you know, and I didn't know what the heck it was for a while, and then it turns out it's a world boss that takes like 40 people to kill, and you know, I'll, I'll never forget the first time that Azure Ghost was like attacked on our server by guilds. It was like a 300 person battle between like Horde and Alliance, where like these waves of Horde would just kill the Alliance that were trying to kill Azure Ghost, and it would go back and forth for hours, and I was on like half of a dial-up connection at that time, <laughs> yeah, because I lived in the country. And my, my internet connection couldn't handle the amount of packets being sent because of what was going on. And I would log on and it would just freeze and I would like see a few seconds of the action and then get kicked off. And like, <laughs> that's that's the kind of stuff that I remember about games is like the, the feeling I have and like the events that happen to me like in these worlds. Yeah, I, I, get, I get really into like the, the ambience and the environment and all that type. Because I remember like when I first started playing, I just like ran off. And I was like, I wonder what's out here. Just like run around, like exploring everything. I remember I like was like level five and I ended up in the Barrens. I'm just oh, like, wow. what's going on? But like, it's like everything ties into it. Like just your level, the quests happening, the mobs, like the, the environment, the trees, the, everything, the music even. The like music, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, the music, like, I'll hear songs, it's just like that typical Barrens, like, you're in the Oasis type thing, or Stranglethorn, and I'm like, oh my god, it's like all the memories. Yeah, it's just such a huge feeling. Yeah, and I it, think people underrate the away. music, too. Yeah, it never goes away. Because you can, you can come back to WoW five years after you log in, you know, like, I mean, I probably will in, like, 2020. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll, I'll like hear the Stormwind theme, or like the Ironforge theme, or the Orgrimmar theme, or the Ashenvale theme, and I'll it, it'll just like bring me right back, right mm -hmm. back to where I was. And I'll, I'm gonna want to log on. I'm gonna want to run around, experience that again. And you know, of course, it's not the same because got cataclysm yeah. happen, and you know, who knows? In 2020, maybe another cataclysm. I don't know what Blizzard's gonna do. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they'll roll back the storyline to like Warcraft 2, the entire world, and then you're playing, you know. <laughs> yeah, another time travel. Or like, what, yeah, what if they do a thing where you 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 play like Kalimdor? I mean, wait, or Azeroth before the the cataclysm, before the the uh, the split, you know, before the maelstrom. Oh yeah, that's right. Like, what if they did that where it's just all one continent? I think that's how it was in the Emerald Dream. Really? And apparently that's going to be the first raid in Legion, which is why I'm pretty excited for that because apparently, like with the I talked to Noble, who's like a super lore nerd. He knows oh, I'm, all the lore. I'm familiar with his stuff. <laughs> yep, and he is talking about how the Emerald Dream, I guess it's going to be the Emerald Nightmare, which is like the corrupted dream, and he said literally anything could happen in it. You could have, like, Dreadlord Jane of Proudmoor. You could have, like, Arthas is a good guy. You could, like, it's just, it's a crazy, like, nightmare. And it's, it's a dream. Okay, I yeah, get it, yeah. And it's like a world the Druids created, like, when they were all, uh... Like, yeah. back before all this stuff. And so, like, that was when the continent was one. And so, it's very likely that it is going to be, like, one big continent with just, like, crazy stuff happening. But that's, like, that's why I'm really excited. Like, probably the most excited I've been for an opening raid since, um, Karazhan, maybe. Yeah. So, the the next expansion, I remember seeing the opening trailer for it. But, like, where is it happening and, and when is it happening? Is it is it just the Emerald Dream? Uh, it's not the Emerald... That's just going to be one part of it like the raid. It's just a raid okay it's so Gul'dan has decided to like okay so it's those islands yeah it's like the, the uh, Warcraft 3 the isles yeah like oh, Warcraft yeah. 3 it's those the broken isles so all like right the start of the frozen throne is yeah. like the place it's happening so like uh the tomb of Sargeras mm, that's gonna be yeah. there I'm running the in there you know on the, on yep. the campaign. <laughs> so everybody's like kind of like is Gul'dan gonna find the stuff he wrote? Cause like he died there, so it's mm -hmm. like, is he gonna go there and see like his like books and writings and stuff and be like, <sighs> what Man. was that me or like, you know? Yep. Like I don't know, but I think people are just happy like Illidan's back, cause mm -hmm. I mean it's like that those old characters are now coming back, and I mean I feel like Blizzard almost rushed into using those Warcraft 3 characters too fast. Like, here's Illidan, here's Arthas. And like, oh, now we're done. And it's like, wait. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and they used them well. Like, I really enjoyed the use of them, but the feeling after it was like, they're all used up now. They're all yeah. gone. They're all dead. Like, what? what's Blizzard going to do? Mm -hmm. It's like, it, it ran its course. And, I, I, you know, it's kind of funny, like, the merely a setback thing. You know, yeah. like, oh, 
Black Temple was merely a setback <laughs> on the back. You know, it's like, yeah. that's it's kind of silly now, but and it is fan service. But I at the same time, the other half of me is glad they're doing that because, again, I love Illidan. I love Kale I, Foss. I love all, you know, Archimonde. And, you know, and I haven't played Warlords since January, so I've heard they brought back Archimonde. Yeah. Like, have you, have you done that? I have not done that, but I know they did bring back Archimonde. That was, like, what happened with Gul'dan. Like, he did something, like, he did with Ner'zhul, and, like, so Gul'dan, his, I don't know, there's, I, I don't know enough about all of it, but that's all I know is, like, Archimonde and Gul'dan, like, Archimonde died, but he didn't die, and it's like, I don't know, <laughs> so yeah, many things. Right. Man, so now, now that my account's back online, because we're doing this, I <laughs> spent the gold and I got my month. Maybe I should go do those those uh, looking for raids and just kind of get the story. Yeah, that's the one nice thing about like LFR is like even though it's really easy, it's like you can catch up on all the lore and raids and stuff really really easy. It's kind of chill out and get it all done. Dude, you know what I haven't done since I logged on? What? I haven't used all my like cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, all the toys. <laughs> got to use all my toys. Got my <laughs> Oh man, what do, what do I have? I have like everything. <laughs> There's Mr. Dude, Mr. Smite. <laughs> Keep going. Oh man, I saw <laughs> Ghost Pirate Millhouse Man of Storm. <laughs> Gammon. Of course. I get a cheer. Break and honor. Yes. Oh, Gammon, Blood Main oh, Charm. Over the Sindore. Oh my gosh, this is the best one. <laughs> I love this stuff. I know. I love how they just add in those things just for fun. You remember this one? I do remember that one. Oh my god. Got mirrored in his <laughs> favor. No more gone pride. This one I was so proud to have. Oh, is that from the uh, the event thing? That was the event. Yeah. Yeah. Was was this the one? Was this the event like right after? No, I think it was right before the Cataclysm. Right before the Cataclysm, yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, did you, uh... I don't know if you've seen any of my other fishing with Krendors. I fish with Ross. And Ross has a bug on one of his guys where he did the, like, Cataclysm event. He got, like, a profit sign that goes, like, on the back and front. It's like, the world is ending. And I guess his character, like, glitched out or something. And, like, he logged off during that event. And then he logged back in, like, a year later on him. And that sign was still on him. Really? And then he, like, died, and, like, the sign was still there. And, like, it just, it never goes away. And so he always has, like, a permanent, like, cataclysmic, like, the world is ending sign on his character. I guess he, like, <laughs> awesome. he told the, like, Blizzard dudes, and they are like, we've never even heard of that. Like, we can get rid of it if you want. And he's like, I think I want to keep it. <laughs> like, that's so epic. Crazy. Yeah, I remember that, but it's been so long, I never would have remembered it unless you mentioned that. That's That's, like, the best... Easter egg thing. <laughs> I know. Bug with a world event that only happened once. I know. Oh it's so weird. So yeah, it's probably like one of the only people that have it. So that would yeah, be like it's... if your character bugged out in vanilla while like banging the scepter to open the AQ gates, and oh, yeah. your character bugged out to where your it's like permanently holding the scepter or something like that. Yeah. Oh man, I remember that event too. I remember like collecting all the resources for like your servers. Yep. And like getting all that. And I remember I had like, they were like, the AQ's opening. And I went to like go to Silithus and my game just crashed and lagged. And I was like, uh, I don't care enough to like watch it open. So like, now I wish I did. But like back then, I was just kind of like, oh, it's just a thing happening. I'll just, whatever. Man, it, that was, that was a huge memory for me being like right at the gong and seeing like the entire server there. Mm -hmm. I have screenshots of it somewhere. And I haven't found them since, like, 2006, so... Oh, man, those memories. Yeah, those one-time events, that, that's the kind of stuff, to me, that makes WoW feel epic. Because it feels like a world that has stuff that happens, mm -hmm. and it only happened once, you know? I wish they had more of that now, because they haven't really done any, like, big one-time oh, events. There's what? Avion's Feather. Yep, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm on my way back. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm in my Murloc costume as a ghost. I'm <laughs> I'm a flying, Fly. now he bugged out, now he's running through the air. <laughs> I'm just circling the Tower of is... Eldara. I'll be, I'll be back. Just What's the last one-time event they did? I'm trying to think. Well, Cataclysm, if, if you consider it, was a one-time event, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, it changed the world. I think it would be Cataclysm, then. Yeah. 
Man, I love those events too. They are really fun. And it's like it makes you feel like you just participated in a really like special, special thing. Yep. I love that stuff. So, I mean, we didn't actually talk about how you got into WoW. So, how'd you get into okay. WoW? Well, you know, that led up to all that. To you talked yeah. about Warcraft 3. <laughs> but it wasn't until, um, let's see, I was playing tons of Diablo 2. And uh, <clears throat> one of my friends was telling me about how they're coming out with this thing called World of Warcraft. And, okay, now I'm fishing and I don't have a line. It's just a bobber. <laughs> I don't even see you fishing. Yeah, it Merlot doesn't even show guy. a pole. It just shows the bobber. That's fun. Okay, so <laughs> if you're in a Murloc costume and you fish, there's no fishing pole or line. Okay, what was I saying? I was playing tons of Diablo 2, and my friends were like, dude, they're making this MMO called World of Warcraft. It's going to be like EverQuest, because they were playing EverQuest at the time. Except it's like the war it's like the Warcraft world, where you get to like make a... You get to make an elf for a or an orc and like run around and like level up. And I was like, "Are you serious? That sounds like the best thing ever." So, um, in fact, I remember sitting in class, imagining what World of Warcraft was going to be like in my head because my friends had told me about it. And I remember drawing on a piece of paper, like while my you know teacher was giving a yeah. lecture or something. Like I, I was imagining like the world and I was like drawing it and I was like drawing like the paths that your character would go through and like trees and mountains and I was just like it just like you know being a kid like imagining what this was going to be like in my head and I was imagining a 3D world like the green skin of an orc and you're just running around and you know like like killing stuff and finding items so but then I, I kind of forgot about it because I was playing a lot of um Diablo 2, and then I, I started playing a game called Moo Online a lot, which is a Korean Oh my MMO. god, I played Moo Online. You, play, you played Moo? I played Moo Online. Okay. I, that was what I played. Alright, yeah, we gotta talk about this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I played it, like, back in, uh, what was it? It was just in beta. I played it, I was like in 7th or 8th grade, and I played it before WoW came out. Okay, that that was what I was doing. So you you played beta just like I did. So they didn't yeah. have the pay to win crap at the time. Yep. You just okay. So you had jewels of bless, and you had like, uh, and they would bless, like upgrade jewels your of soul. gear. Jewels of soul. Oh my gosh, man. And you had chaos. And then the yeah the jewels of ca the chaos right now. What did those yeah. do? Those you, were those you put like in the chaos, chaos machine. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. man. And you can I make chaos weapons. Yeah, and those were huge. Mm-hmm. But you, you remember, also like, had a chance of them failing. Oh yeah, the yeah. dragon armor. I remember the dragon armor for the Dude, dragon knight. Pride. Or the dark knight. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So my, my pride was that I had a full dragon set that I had traded for and upgraded myself into like plus four or plus five or something. Yeah. Where pieces of it started to glow. Yeah, I remember, remember that. Like, when you hit like plus five or plus six, like it started to glow. And yeah. then like higher that you upgraded it, it started to glow more and more. Yeah, and once you got uh, like seven, I think it got like really shiny. But you know, it was like shiny. the jewels of soul, and they only had, like fifty percent chance of working. And then yeah, and that was the most brutal system because you could take one of those really expensive pieces, and if you tried to upgrade it and it failed, it just went back to nothing. Right? Is that is that? Yeah, that's what it, it would go back to uh, like plus six or seven if you were yeah, trying to get that's really high. Wasted all of that time. Oh my mm -hmm. god. Dude, I also like, <laughs> bought and sold items off that game, eBay style. <laughs> really? That was, see, that was another aspect, and I that's that's kind of the, the shady aspect, but I loved that because what that did for me was it made me realize that all of these these items and weapons in, in Moo and also Diablo 2 and eventually in WoW, we, we'll get to that later, I guess, mm -hmm. that um, they had real-life value yeah. because people would pay for the work that you put in because that stuff was rare and it was hard to get and it was powerful in the game so I remember very specifically like I had a few pieces of that dragon armor that I had traded for and um, so what I did was I, I would trade like for other things and I would go farm stuff and I would sell those jewels and things for money on eBay and I would use those <laughs> that money on eBay in my PayPal account to like buy pieces of armor for cheaper than I bought the jewels for yeah. Because I was like, I was like waiting for like them to go up when they were there cheap, and so I like I would like flip those jewels and buy pieces of armor that had already been upgraded with those jewels, so I didn't have to do the randomized aspect thing that made me want to cry when they, when they <laughs> Yeah. 
And yeah, anyways, that that was uh, that was my Moo online experience, and I think I hit level a hundred before I just completely lost steam. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I really love that. That was my first like online RPG experience, so I was like super hooked on that game. I'm like, this concept of a game is amazing, and like, and the fact that it was free. Like you didn't have to yeah. pay for, like, EverQuest. You know, I was a broke high school student or just out of high school at the time, so. Mm -hmm. And it had that like Diablo feel, like a Korean oh, Diablo. In a, that's and why I like, loved it, because it felt yeah. like MMO Diablo to me. Yeah, and you just like grinded the mobs. I remember there's like Lorencia with the dragons. Like you oh, first walk God. out there and you just hear the dragons like, squawk, like making the squawking noise. <laughs> you know what's really sad about that game though? Hmm. I went back in 2011 or 12 because I was nostalgizing about it with one of yeah. my friends who played it with me. Like, oh my gosh, I want to log back in on that game because it still exists. Mm -hmm. I log in. And it's like a pay-to-win system, and it's just completely – everything that I thought was awesome was completely devalued, and it didn't age well. Yeah. I'm not sure if you've tried to go back and play it in the past oh, few I years. Have. Oh, you have? I even made videos about it. Oh, man. Like, I, I don't have, know. Uh, Maybe your opinion was different, but, like, it felt so bad for me to play it. It, it was did. like my memories were so much more vibrant than what the game actually was. <laughs> Yeah. Well, like, like, when I go back, I mainly just go to the, like, I go to the zones, and I listen to the sounds, and I kind of, like, walk around, and that's, like, my main experience of, like, nostalgia, because that brings back those memories, but, like, yeah. the game is, like, a playable game, and, like, in general now, I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> it's, but, like, going back to those zones, like, going to Noria, like, the elf zone... Oh, just yeah, hearing that... the sounds, or Davios, the snow zone. Just Man, hearing, it's been like, the... so long there. So many yeah, hours. Dude. Dozens like, and dozens of The hours. Yeti noise. Where they're like, Rawr. like, all I would yeah. do is just, like, sit by the Yetis and just, like, farm them. I, had the... I was a dark wizard, so I'd use, like, evil spirit. Now I'd just tape my mouse down. And go, like... Oh, that's what I would do. That's exactly... <laughs> yeah. I would go to do that stuff. <laughs> and that's how I would farm a lot of my crap. Oh, my God, like, in the, uh, the dungeon... There's like one spot with ghosts and stuff, and I would just sit there with the ghosts, and like people would come kill you and try to take your spot. Yes, See, they would. Like, kind of pay attention, like oh, I can't lose this spot. Oh, but it was so good. I remember, yeah. oh my god, like I would like sit in the uh, like Lorencia, and I remember I would just like listen to the the noises, like the anvil clanking. You remember that anvil guy? He just, yeah, like, yeah. Was, like, clang, 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 and it was such a clang, sparse. Clang, clang soundtrack game you know like yeah the, the sounds were sparse and the music was sparse but because of that like it, it rang out so much in your memory because it was so i don't know poignant it was so yeah. like that was all there was and so you remember yeah. it was like the yeah the sound effects stood out the most because of that all right what like class did you play back in the day i played a dark wizard dark and wizard. then he went into a soul master Mm -hmm. So I think it was, and then I got high enough that I made a magic gladiator. Dude, I I never even had it like, ah. though, because those were like that was like the OP class. Yeah. That like you couldn't make until you hit a certain level. Mm hmm. And I think by the time that I could make one, uh, I had already started playing WoW, and so I wasn't playing that game as much. Yeah. I, think I remember was... I uh, yeah, I was playing WoW, and then I my friends were like, hey, we should go back to it. Like they did some updates and stuff, so I like went back, and I was like still having fun. It was before, like, they went super pay-to-win. Mm -hmm. They were like, if you out, if you pay, like, five bucks, you can go on this server, and it has, like, double the gold and double the drop rate. And I was like, fine, I can do that. Like, it wasn't, like, buy the craziest shit possible. <laughs> but, like, yeah. uh, I did that I for a while. And I was like, this is pretty fun. And then I just kind of lost interest again, and, like, everybody stopped playing. But, like, I, don't know, I got a Magic Gladiator. He was, like, super fun. And, I don't know, I just I really enjoyed that game back when I, I played loved it. it. I absolutely yeah. loved it. I was in a band whenever uh, I think WoW had come out already and I kind of was taking my first big break from WoW and uh, I was in a band with this guy and um, I knew that he was into video games and uh, I you know, I wasn't even playing WoW at the time. I was focusing more on music. Like every time I take a break, break from like video games, it's always to like focus on music. Yeah. So like we were talking about stuff and turns out this guy that I was playing in a band with was an EverQuest GM. And I was like, are you kidding me? I've been you for like a month now, and you, you're, you were, he's like, yeah, I just used to work from home, and you know, I'd log on every day, and Sony would pay me X bucks an hour to like get on and just be a GM in EverQuest. And I was like, are you kidding? And so like, I just nerded out with this guy, because he, he was, you know, not the nerdy type. 
he was actually what you probably consider like um, <clears throat> one of those guys that you think never played video games, or if he did, he wouldn't talk about it. Turns out he's an EverQuest GM. So we started nerding out about video games, and I, I told him about, you know, I've been playing WoW and stuff. He's like, yeah, I've heard about that. You know, I heard it's a lot like EverQuest. I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's a little bit better, though. And then I started saying, talking about this Korean MMO that I played called Moo. And, I was, and so he actually eventually downloaded that game and started playing it with me. And um, <clears throat> then he, he and I both found out at the time that you could download, like, this program that would automatically farm for you when you were asleep. Because I, I, it was so much easier than like you know, taking <laughs> yep. down your mouse button and like using a weight to like hold down your F key or whatever. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I downloaded this program with him, and he's like, I'm, "I don't think I'm going to use this though. I'm just, I'm just going to play it legit." I was like, "Okay, I'll, I'll use it when I'm like at school or asleep." Because that was yeah. so exciting for me to go to school and come back and like, "Oh my yeah, god, inventory! Look at this!" And I'll never forget the day that he sent me a text message. He's like, "He's like, um, I think your character just got banned." <laughs> like what? <laughs> And he's like, and he was like, yeah. He was like, I, I it just sent because it sent out a world message when it would ban someone, and it was yeah. like scrolling across the top of the screen. It was like, so and so, my character name has been banned for botting. Oh my god, I and, remember those. Yeah, and and he sent me a text message. He's like, dude, yeah, I think your dude's gone. <laughs> I was like, no, because he was so high level at the time. I think I'd hit level two hundred something, which was huge at the time. Yeah, that's and crazy. I had so much stuff. So that was that was the end of Moo Online for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember like the like messages that would go across the top. So I remember they used to have the dragon invasions too. Yes, that was that was when I started playing the second time. That kind of stuff was being implemented. Yeah, I remember you'd get like the boxes of luck or the box <laughs> like all those boxes. You just go yeah, throw them and that get. Was such a huge thing. It was such yeah. a rare thing. Oh my god! Because I remember I used to get a bunch of them, and then I'd go like open them in Noria by this like little tree, so nobody could steal my shit when I opened it. Yep, because it, cause it was like Diablo, man. Stuff would drop on the ground, and other people could get it. <laughs> yeah, that was so exciting for me. Like I that's know. why I I, I kind of wanted a game like that again. And Diablo three happened, and it was like that kind of. But then they kind of like went away. Then they did like personal loot, and I was like, oh man, this isn't what I remember. This isn't this isn't like stressful when a boss dies and. You know, it's like a click fest. Yeah. That's what it's like in those games. It was a click fest, and like it felt so awesome whenever you like you got the item because there was oh my god, was, like, yeah, no scarcity. It was like who got it? Who got it? You, yeah, I got it. Oh my god! You're like if your friend got it, you know, and he he was in a group with you. It was like the same excitement. You're like I, I remember it. what is it? I remember going to like those like Lost Tower. Like there's all the levels of Lost Tower. Yeah, and I remember the top one. There'd be people AFK farming, and I'd like go through there, and I'd hear like the ding. Like a gem dropped, and I'd just go oh. steal it from them. Dude. I remember one dude was AFK, and I took his like bless that dropped, and he was oh. like, and then he like came back, and he's like, I think something dropped. And I'm like, uh, and I just poured it out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nope. Oh man, yeah, I remember having a jewel taken from me, and it was it was again while I was like AFK, and and I came I come back, and this dude is like still there farming, and he's like he like he's like basically leeching off me because he yeah. knew I was killing stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was a horrible feeling knowing that, like, I went to the bathroom or something, went and get something to eat, and yeah, a jewel dropped. It was a terrible feeling. <laughs> Man, I like never like find anyone that played that game. I'm glad yeah, I finally. That's, found I was it. so surprised that you played it because it was such an obscure Korean MMO from like yeah. four WoW. You know. Yeah. It was... Anyways, that's awesome. That's yeah. so cool. So that was a huge aside right there. A huge yeah. side. <laughs> that was a huge side quest. Yep. So from Mu. Um, I was playing that, and then um, it was like the countdown until WoW came out. Like I remember, it was like coming out, and they were doing like they were doing beta, and it was closed beta. One of my friend was one of my friends is in closed beta, and I was like, dude, I need to build a computer. So like one of my friends knew how to build computers, and so I spent a bunch of my Mu and Diablo money that I had saved up on PayPal by selling items and built a gaming computer that was really good. Mm-hmm. And it was green, see-through, had aliens on it, of course. You know, so that that was like what was popular at the time, and that was what I that was was cheap. So I bought it, and that was my WoW computer. And um, so I remember the first time I ever logged on WoW, it was a stress test. It was like a um, during a weekend, I think, or maybe it was a week long. One of those or stre- open beta stress tests, the first one they ever had. And I logged on. I made a troll hunter named McDonald's because I thought that was funny because it was like, you know, just retarded. And um, so I logged on McDonald's and I was like running around, you know, the troll orc starting area and just like being so excited. And I was so pumped about this game. But then it hit me and I realized 
everything I'm doing right now is going to go away because this is just the, the beta. So yeah. no matter what I do, it's going to be erased. And that made me feel really bad. So I think I only hit like level 8 or 9 or 10. And then I stopped playing. So that was the first time I ever actually played WoW. And, and it was like the countdown until like when it was actually coming out. And like my friends and I, we, were, we had a group of like 10 or 15 of us that were like just ready for this to happen. And we, we couldn't decide if we were going to go Horde or Alliance. And then eventually we settled on Alliance. <clears throat> and um, I was out of town whenever WoW released that night because I was on a vacation with my family. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of bummed. So I didn't get to experience the opening night. But turns out it was kind of good that I didn't because the servers were horrible. Like so many people were logging on and Blizzard didn't expect it. You know, I, yeah. I, did you play from the beginning? Oh, dude, I remember I played, uh, I didn't play beta, but I played, it was right after Christmas. I remember it launched in like November. November. De- yeah, November. And I got it on like New Year's Day, like January 1st of 2005. And I was, I was like, all right, my friends are getting it. They're all playing it. And they, I remember being on like TeamSpeak and they were just like, oh my God, we just took a Zeppelin and there's like alligators and stuff. And they kill like in Stranglethorn or Raptors. Like yeah. they had no idea. So they just took the Zeppelin and died there. And I was like, I want to play this game. And I was like looking for it and everyone was sold out because you needed to buy the box copy. And yeah, so, because there was no digital th- anything. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh my God, I need it. And I found a GameStop like. 40 minutes away or something and I was like I talked about talk to my parents I'm like I need to go there and they had like one left and he was like yeah this game is like people are buying it like not and I was like yes and I was so happy and I just didn't go to school the next day I just played wow and I was like this is amazing yep so you you, you were lucky you got to ex- you got to like get away from all the like the opening week crap yeah <laughs> like I, I avoided the first like two days of the opening crap because it wasn't I think it was two days after it released I got home and my friends had hopped like six different servers <laughs> in those two days two or three days because it was just like every server was so badly overpopulated mm-hmm. so they would hop and just hop and hop and hop and so it was like by the time I got home the night that I got home they had finally settled on Sargeras and so you know there was some level sevens and like tens and twelves by the time that I started playing. So mm-hmm. I felt like I was a little behind, but not too far behind. And my my character was a gnome warrior named Bull Roarer, like Bull Roarer took from the Hobbit. Because mm-hmm. I was I was like, dude, I'm like this powerful little gnome warrior, you know, like a <laughs> Hobbit. Yeah. And um, that that was my the beginning of my journey, man. And it was it was such a huge feeling because I remember I logged in for the first time, and my friend Garrett, who was a dwarf warrior named Ketrock, he met me right where I made my character. And he gave me a breastplate that I could wear, and uh, at like level five, like a male breastplate. And he gave me like twenty silver or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Huge amount. I was like, oh my gosh, because I remember the I didn't make my own first twenty silver until like you know level ten or something. Yeah, so, making money back then was really hard. Yeah, because I remember within the, like the first night or something like that, um, it was a big deal. Like someone in our guild, one of my friends who had played a. Uh, who played um, Final Fantasy XI with us a little mm-hmm. bit? He was he was like, dude, he has a gold already. And everyone's <laughs> like, oh my gosh, Bond has already made a gold. He's like, yeah, he's like a leather worker. And sk- he's been skinning and doing all this stuff. And he's already level thirteen or whatever. And yeah, it was just like such a huge deal those <laughs> early days because, and and you know, of course, me being into the economics of video games because I bought and sold items on like Diablo and Moo and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I I get on eBay. And I'm looking at the price of gold because it was, you know, this is before Blizzard allowed you to stop selling. Yeah. It. And it was just like one gold was like thirty dollars. <laughs> and I'll never forget the feeling of knowing that, like, there was that much of a demand for gold on like individual servers that, like, some servers a gold was selling for thirty dollars of like real money. Yeah. And I just remember thinking, like, I need to make some gold because I was a broke, you know, student at the time. Mm-hmm. I was like, I could make some extra cash by doing this. <laughs> I did with other games, which of course is against the terms of service. And then were you in a like what grade were you in when, when WoW, WoW came, came out? out? I was nineteen. No, so, so you're like just starting college, or something yeah, I just like started that. college. I was like in a dead end programming class that I ended up almost flunking out of because I hated it. <laughs> yeah, and I was like doing a music degree, but that didn't work because I, I was like, dude, I don't want to be a sixth grade band teacher because turns out that's all you can do with a music <laughs> basically. So yeah. I was I was in a pretty apathetic point. Mm-hmm. We were like, my my future wasn't looking like I thought it was gonna look. 
because you know, I was playing in bands and stuff, but you know, my yeah. I was surrounded by people who were like, "Don't do music for a living. You'll never do it. You'll you know, it's it's a you know it's it's the worst uh, living you can ever make. You'll scrape by your whole life. You can never have a family. You know, just all this stuff. So it was like so much negativity around what I loved doing, which was music. So I pretty much just like dove into video games, like I like I would do like Diablo and Moo and WoW and I played so much of it. Yeah, I mean, when I started, I was like, uh, I was a freshman in high school, so it's like I was going into high school. It's like this whole new like high school world, and I was like, this is scary. And then I was like, I can escape to the world of Warcraft, <laughs> and then I just like could play WoW. I remember I'd like sit like in lunchtime, I would eat lunch, and I'd go to the library and just like write WoW notes. Like I'd be like, all right, Gosh. this is how I'm gonna get gold today. And I'd be like, I'm going to go farm the turtles in Tenaris. <laughs> it's like, write all these things. And it was like, I love doing that, though. And it was like, I look back on that and I'm like, it's like, I was r really into, like, that game. Because that was like, all I would do is just do that and then come home and then play WoW. And be like, so you played WoW all through high school? All through high school. Dude, it, see, I look back and, and think, man, it's probably a good thing that WoW wasn't out while I was in high school. Because mm. I probably would have gone off the deep end like i did <laughs> yeah and I mean, college is a little more forgiving sometimes because you can make your own schedule and i ended yeah. up basically tailoring my schedule to how much i played well <laughs> uh but high school you know you, you didn't have that you didn't have that luxury yeah so i mean well i didn't really try too hard in high school because okay. of, like yeah. i got c's and i got d's but i was like hey as long as i pass you know i'm gonna play well i like i would use up all my sick days I <laughs> just play WoW. You know, it you was... know what my WoW was in in high school. Hmm. It was Diablo two. Oh wow! Because Diablo two came out in two thousand, and by the time two thousand happened, I was like, um, I think I was. It was the summer of my freshman year, I think. Mm -hmm. So like all through high school, I played Diablo two like crazy. So that was like my drug throughout high school was like <laughs> farming items in D two, planning out what the heck I was doing, uh, you know, like. Doing like what you would do, I would fantasize about like what I would, what I was gonna go do when I got home, and like yeah. if it was the weekend, like and I had, of course, I made friends that played Diablo, and mm -hmm. we would just like we would think about what we were gonna do. We'd have like all nighters, like dude, we're gonna stay up all night and like farm the the farm act four and like see if we, how many uniques or uniques we can get and blah blah blah. You know, it's just like so that was my wow in, in uh, high school, mm -hmm. and I pretty much did play it too much. To the point to where you know I'd go to school, like, out to sleep, <laughs> yep. and just you know nod off in class thinking about and stuff. But but Diablo yeah. had a different feeling than WoW because WoW was so immersive. Yeah, and it's a persistent world. Whereas Diablo was kind of like you made your own instances of a game, and your friends could join your game, or your, you could join your friend's game. So it was a little bit less like of the immersive thing. I'm now an expert fisherman. <laughs> this is this is really helping out your fishing. Yeah, dude, I'm crying. <laughs> Yeah, I just, it's like, I look back on high school, and it's literally like, half my memories are like, vague high school memories, and the other half is just like, wow moments. Like, I remember like, getting home on Monday, and I was like, this is a Nixia day. Dude. <laughs> I was just like, go do oh a Nixia. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Man. See, for me, it was like, I, I would, I would, you know, schedule my classes around raids. So, if I knew that we were going to have, you know, Molten Core on Thursday... At mm -hmm. this time, I would make sure that semester I didn't have any classes during that period. It was that, <laughs> yeah. that was my reality for uh, for a while. So I had a little nice luxury of doing that, you know. Which, I, in, in the end, I look back at college and I realize that like you know, college was just this time of me figuring out what the heck I was doing. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I didn't end up using any of my like I, di I didn't even like finish college like properly. I don't even have a degree. Yeah. I just I look back and it was just like a bunch of classes I took tons of them like more more hours than i should have to get a degree but mm. all i did was like play wow and play in bands <laughs> and skateboard a bunch that was like that's all i cared about my college was just like i went to community college took some classes i would and then i started doing youtube and that was like so as a uh, i think right before cataclysm it was like during wrath and i remember just like i would write scripts during class and I'd like go home and make them. Or I remember one day I had to go to like art history for my college class, and I was like, I know what I'm gonna do. Instead, I'm gonna go get donuts and coffee and work on my video. Awesome. <laughs> so I did that, and it was just like, eventually I was like, well, I think I'm gonna drop out of school. And I had to like convince my parents, like, this is a good idea because I feel like 
it can go somewhere. And they were like, I don't know. And now they're like, good job. Yeah, see, that's, the thing is, that's the exact feeling my parents had when I was like spending all my time playing video games. I mean, I wasn't doing YouTube, but like when I would spend all my time playing Diablo back in high school, my, my parents were like, you shouldn't, sp- you, know, you shouldn't play games that much. They always said that to me anyway yeah. through the PlayStation and Nintendo days. But mm-hmm. it wasn't until like <laughs> I transferred all this money to my mom's account for my PayPal she was like, did you just transfer all this m- a ton of money into my bank account? I was like, yeah, that's the money I've been telling you about. That I made <laughs> selling Diablo 2 items. They never bothered me again about playing video games. After, <laughs> ever. All through Diablo, all through high school. And then in, in, when I played WoW, I kind of did the same thing. Yeah. So, you know, they they, they, didn't, they were still concerned about the, the time I spent playing, but they never, like, were hard on me about it anymore. Yeah. And, um, of course, YouTube came a lot later for me, like, I didn't start YouTube until like the very end of 2012. Yeah, so that was um, by the time I was already a full fledged adult out on my own and all that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Uh, so we're almost closing in on an hour, so we got about like five more minutes. But what are like some of your just favorite WoW memories, like that just stick out? Uh, well, AQ opening event was epic, even though like um. It was laggy for me. That was really awesome. The mm. first time I ever stepped in Molten Core, that was a huge experience for me because no one knew what they were doing. Yep. You and, just had the you two know, molten, or the, the giant standing right there when you were Yeah, and like we spent, it was a Saturday, I remember. And this dude on our server got every 60 that existed, which was almost 40, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. So we, we brought in some 58s and some 59s and stuff. And we spent like seven or eight hours that day just killing giants in trash, and we never even made it to Lucifron. <laughs> yeah. And that was just such a huge, big feeling. And I remember I remember our tank, the guy who put it together, he had put together a full fire resist set, and he was tanking all of those trash with a fire resist set, which, looking back, was the stupidest thing ever because none <laughs> of that stuff did fire damage except yeah. fire lords. But he was tanking everything in full fire resist. So <laughs> that was a good memory. Uh, what else? <clears throat> Man, just so much. I remember seeing the, the first um, Sulfurous Hand of Ragnaros on the server. Yeah. The, just the feeling of that, like, that exists now on our server, and there's someone with it, and he's <laughs> using it. And it was just this epic feeling. Like, you know, even though it, I didn't have it, no one I knew had it, it was just the feeling of that that existed on my server. And That's I could, what was so cool about servers back then, is it was such a, like, tight-knit community. You yeah, know, and like the level 60s, like you, you'd be like, oh man, that guy's 60. You're like, that guy's Blackwing Lair gear. Like that's insane. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and it was like such a closed experience, and it was, it felt so real and visceral. Like, and that's mm-hmm. I, honestly, that's the reason why I don't play WoW much anymore is because that experience doesn't exist. Yeah. They've opened it up, which you know, of course, has a lot of positive aspects, but nowadays it's just it doesn't have that feeling. Like you go to Stormwind or Ironforge and you'll just kind of see whoever, or if you're out in the world leveling, you'll just see people from, you know, with an asterisk next to your name, like, I see you, yeah. and it's just like, I'll never see that person again. I don't care about that person. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's, it's a bad feeling for someone like me who, you know, grew up on online games where you had, especially MMOs in, in early WoW, where you had, like, a community, and that mm. community was real, and you knew these people. And even if, like, you had the opposite faction... You saw those people in battlegrounds, and you knew their personality. You knew their play style. You knew their gear, and you knew what to expect. And if you saw so and so get a new piece of gear, you're like, "Oh crap! He just got a new piece of gear, and he's going to be using that against me," you know, like an AV or whatever. Yeah. It's, so that's oh that's God. another big memory I had of like vanilla and Burning Crusade, especially those those two expansions. They they just had that super visceral feel where. And, uh, heck, even into Wrath, because it wasn't until the end of Wrath you had, like, looking for Dungeon. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. until the end of Wrath. My but, God, yeah. I remember, like, the PvP. Like, you would know everybody in PvP. Like, oh, man, we're playing against this guy again. Or, like, they were, like, the hardcore PvPers, too, like, going for High Warlord. Oh, yeah, you go that. up against, like, the Warlord group or the Marshall group. Yeah. You're like, crap, I, I may as well just AFK, you know, because they're just, <laughs> just going to roll us. And, heck, I, in Vanilla, I joined what we called the Marshall group for months uh, or maybe maybe it was just a few months and uh, I got up to the rank of commander which was 11 I think and I, you know I was pushing to marshal because I, I, I wanted to hit grand marshal like I wanted to be yeah. rank 14 because that was the most epic thing I, I could think of at that time besides being a top end raider with like Ash Condi and everything which yeah. I, you know, I I just didn't have the schedule for it at that time yeah. but I pushed hard man I hit commander and then I got like 
three fourths through Commander until life just hit me so hard, and I realized I can't do this. Yeah. I can't play WoW for for 14 hours a day no matter what, which mm -hmm. is what it was taking to like go from rank 11 to 12 to 13 and eventually a 14. And I remember that was one of the most like that was one of the hardest decisions I had to make is because I had pushed so hard for rank 11, and it was like the rank before you started getting epics, mm -hmm. like these big epic pieces back when epics mattered. You know, epics were like that was a big deal. And giving up that week and not having the schedule because, like, you know, I had to spend time with my girlfriend. That relationship was getting crappy because I was playing WoW so much. In school, I was making bad or worse grades and family and friends. And it was just, like, all that hit me so hard in giving up the Grand Marshal grind. So that was a big memory that was bittersweet because I remember going for it and then I remember having to give it up. Yeah. I mean, that is, that's, like, the sad reality of it all, too. I remember, like, one of our, like, raid leader guys, like, we were just like, why aren't you coming to the raid tonight? And he's just like... I need to, like, spend time with my wife because, like, she talked to me about, like, getting a divorce, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> oh, man, that that's brutal. <laughs> yeah, it's just like... I don't even... I, like, I see him on, like, Facebook and stuff now, and, like, he did get divorced, but, like, he got remarried, and, like, he doesn't play WoW anymore, so I'm like... At least he, like, moved on and, like, rebuilt his life and stuff. Yeah, so, you I mean, know, like, life, it'll force you to do that no matter what. Yeah, because it's, like, as much awesome like stuff this game provides like it, it can also like tear lives apart <laughs> yeah definitely and you know any of us who have played wow to the extent that we have you can't have done that without experiencing pieces of that you know mm -hmm. and, and whether it's personal life school life professional life you know it, it it edges it edges in on that stuff and it's uh that's one of the reasons why you know now because i make youtube videos um and it takes so long and so much effort to make at least my style of videos, I don't play near as many video games as I used to. Yeah. And it's really hard to come to terms with that because it's like if I want to put out a video a week or even like two videos a month, I have to spend this 40 hours to make this video or, you know, if it's an easier one, 30 hours, which is still a lot of time. And if yeah. I want to make like a really tough video like One Winged Angel or like Gower Plains, it's like, dude, I'm like out of commission for two or three weeks straight making this stuff and like I can't play video games unless I like I like time manage. So it's it's so hard like to do this now and it's it's like I'm so happy that I get to make a living, you know, with doing video game music and recording it, but at the same time it's like I gave up playing as many video games as I used to to do that. I so know. that's that's been a weird <laughs> Thing I've been having to come to terms with these past yeah I guess it's been two and a half years now so yeah a lot of times even when I play games I just stream them now because I'm like yeah. well then it's like I'm kind of working <laughs> you know and it's like I have to I'll make like let's play stuff but I still miss like putting in all that editing like I'm making a big series now and I'm like oh yeah like I keep telling people like it's coming along like I'm making this big Billy series and like I wrote like a 30 page script so far and I'm like I'm really pumped for it and then I like started editing and I'm like this is going to take a while. Yep. <laughs> like, I need to voice it all and get other people to do voices. There's so many characters, and, like, everyone's like, where is it? And I'm like, it's a lot more work than I thought. Yeah, uh, man. <laughs> Anything yeah. creative like that, the more creative energy you put into something, it takes a lot of time and energy. And a lot of the YouTube audience, I've realized, are younger people that mm -hmm. don't have a lot of perspective on what it takes to do that. Yeah. And, you know, it's, 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 it's a whole lot different than, you know, loading up a stream or loading yeah. up a Let's Play but a lot of people don't understand that, like, it's it doesn't take much energy to do Let's Plays or streams mm -hmm. because th you're not really putting in creative energy there the same type as it takes to create a machinima or a story or, you know, make a song like like I do. It's just it's a whole different animal. And that's another thing that I've been having to come to terms with because a lot of people on the other side, they don't realize that. They don't care. They just – a lot of people only care if you put out something yeah. no matter what it is. And it's like – but. But don't, you don't understand. This takes effort. This takes a lot of energy, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, but there are a lot of people out there who do get it. A lot of people who do understand. And, and they, they, they don't mind if you take the time. And that makes that gives me a little bit more peace, I guess. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of that, uh, why don't you promote your channel or your stream or whatever you want to promote? Uh, yeah. Well, if you like video game music and you, and you would like to see it done in voices... Um, which is kind of a, it can be an awkward thing, but it can be a fun thing. Go to my channel, youtube.com slash Um I also have a Twitter and Facebook where I kind of like post stuff, you know, updates, uh, you know, and sometimes random crap that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. That, that happens. So, yeah, that, that's me. 
It happens a lot on my Twitter. <laughs> yep. That's the random. fun part about Twitter. You can just post whatever. <laughs> yeah. And I'll uh I'll put links to all that below for all the lazy people like me. That just wanna click on it. Cool. So that was fun. Uh yeah. thank you for joining this me. Fun. Yeah. Indeed, man, thanks for inviting. Yeah, no problem. And uh I always never know how to end these. So <laughs> I just try to make them really awkward endings. Uh, can I, mean, I slash wave? Let's see. Can I slash wave okay. in this costume? It okay. works. Yay. Yay, BlizzCon. Bye, guys. <laughs> Yay, BlizzCon 2007. <laughs> Woo. See ya.